Hey guys, so today I am brewing a very simple Saison. Um, it's going to be a collab with Growler Hour. Um, so basically the idea is I'm going to brew like my base Saison recipe. Um, it's like pretty standard uh, Saison, get some French uh, Saison yeast. And uh, the only weird stuff is that I throw in some coriander and rosemary. Um, and yeah, it's like a light one too. It's 5.5%, uh, get some sugar, some pale malt, white wheat, Munich, Mandarin, Bavaria, and Huel melon, uh, hops. Um, so really simple, very light, uh, only four SRM. And, uh, so that's what I'm doing for the collab. And then I'm going to, you know, ferment it out, uh, and then transfer it into secondary where Growler Hour is going to use their house culture on it, which is actually called Casa Flora. So that's like why we decided to do this collab. It's kind of perfect. And uh, so they're going to do their house culture, uh, age it for a while. And we're also talking about throwing in some cherries. So this is actually the base Saison recipe that I use in my Rosemary's Cherry Cherry Saison. Um, so it's great. I mean, we already know it goes good with cherries, so it'll be really interesting to see how adding them, uh, in secondary and adding an extra culture, uh, will do it. And I don't know if they want to do like whole cherries or if they want to do the normal cherry juice I want to use, but I'm leaving that up to them. Uh, so I'm really excited to try it eventually. I mean, uh, this year I really want to get more into aging beers. Um, cause usually when I end up doing it, it's like on accident. Um, it's just like a beer that I don't really like and I'll let it sit around forever. And then I, I've actually had really good luck with it. Like my, um, existence is pain. Uh, farmhouse is so good a year in and it sucks before. So I'm going to throw in my seven gallons of water now. I'm doing a full water mash, um, so no sparge. Um, to add any extra water, we're gonna use the full volume. And um, yeah, let's turn on my system, I guess. I'm actually gonna set my uh, strike water at 152 today. I'm doing a Saison, so I want it to be pretty dry when it finishes. Um, and then we're gonna add some fruit uh, when it's aging, um, and it's going to get aged with a fancy culture I'll tell you about. Um, so I just want to heat up my water before I even mill my grain. Throwing in my kettle so that it's all hot and stuff. So I'm going to turn on my pump and, you know, just circulate the water. Same way I always do it. There's my heat. So I, um, I lift this tube so that I can prime my pump. Um, cause, uh, if, if you haven't heard a pump, uh, run on only air, um, Consider yourself lucky because it sounds like a squealing pig. This beer gets nine pounds of pale malt or two row, two row pale malt, um, one pound of sugar, one pound of white wheat, and eight ounces of Munich. Pretty simple. Um, should give some good head with the white wheat. The sugar will dry it out a lot, and the Munich gives a little biscuity flavor. We're doing ounces, pounds. Oh, this is gonna take forever. I 
Here's our wheat. Munich is eight ounces. Do I want to be doing it this way? No. I would prefer to have a surface and cut out some shelving, but we haven't gotten there yet. So, I'm not mad. I get to sit down while milling, which is rare. And, I don't know, maybe I'll have a better center of gravity and not fall over. Um, let's check my gap. Gap's good. All right, let's do it. Also, it's a pound of sugar, in case I didn't mention it. All right, and now I can actually mash in. So for water, I'm using RO, and I'm gonna do a pretty balanced, um, kind of verging on the sweeter side uh, water profile, so four grams calcium chloride, two grams Epsom salt, and let's call it three grams of gypsum. I have like the decimal points in my grams, but my scale doesn't read it, so who cares? All right, let's see if I can remember that as I do it. Calcium chloride, four, not ounces, that would be out of control. Alrighty, so that's our water additions. Um, now I'm going to toss this into my water. Um, my water's already going um, because, you know, wanted to get an early start today. Um, so yeah, meet you at the kettle. Okay, so we're at our strike water temperature. Um, and I'm going to add my, well, first I'm going to turn off the pump so you can actually hear me. And uh, I'm going to add my water additions now. Um, I usually add them a little bit earlier, but uh, I didn't. <laughs> They'll mix in with the, um, with the malt and stuff and be all good, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mash in real quick. Take a quick pH reading and I'm gonna pull out my little meat thermometer to make sure that my um, temperature is where I want it. I'm hoping to mash at like 150 to make it kind of dry. So I've been uh, watching the brew lot or listening to the brewlosophy podcast um, from start to finish basically. I'm like on episode 12 or something um, and Mitchell always has his pH between I think he said like 5.2 and 5.3 so that's what I'm striving for now, but uh, I doubt I'm going to hit it. Yeah, I didn't. It's 5.5. I'm cool with 5.5. It was just... Oh, 5.4! 5.3! I don't know if this is wrong. Five. 
5.3. Who knows if that's accurate because you're not supposed to take pH readings when it's hot, but that doesn't stop me. All right, and our temperature in our mesh is I'm getting 146, which is not ideal. All right, I'm gonna turn this temperature up to like 151 and try to get it back up to 150. I mean, the lower it is, the drier the beer's gonna be, so like really 146 will be fine. Um, but, um, you know, I like to hit my targets. Um, so I'm gonna do a 45 minute mash on this one. I'll check my gravity around minute 30, I guess, just to make sure we're on track. So this one has sugar in it as well, so I'm not sure if the pre-boil gravity takes into account the sugar or if they add that in the boil, but we're gonna find out. We're about 30 minutes in, and I'm gonna just take my first gravity reading. So it looks like we're at 9.4 brick, 9.2 bricks. Let's call it 9.2. 9.2, so that means our gravity right now is 1.038. So we're looking for a 1.043. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes, and I'm gonna take a pre-boil gravity reading. Ooh, it has not changed much. We got up to 9.5, which is 1.039, so we're four gravity points low, but I did add a little more water than I meant to. Um, so I think in the boil, we can get rid of that discrepancy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this green. Welcome to everyone's favorite segment. Watch Sarah climb on a chair and try to get this green screen out. <sighs> yep, all right, let's do it. I really want a pulley system, but my ceilings I'm pretty sure are made of cardboard. Um, so that's not gonna happen in this apartment. All right, so I'm letting that drain. I'm cranking up my temperature. And should be boiling soon. So for this Saison, it is very, very lightly hopped. Uh, and there's only two ounces of hops going into it. Um, in this, uh, well, I usually use this for my cherry saison, so, you know, I don't want, like, the hops to really take over. You more get the uh, aroma from the rosemary and coriander that goes into this, so the hops are really just kind of for bittering and maybe a little bit of flavor, but it, they, it really doesn't come through much. So I use um, uh, one ounce at 15 minutes of fuel melon and one ounce at 60 minutes of Mandarina Bavaria. All right. So Mandarina Bavaria, one ounce at 60 minutes. That was a lucky pour. And Huel Melon at 15 minutes, one ounce. So I'm also going to throw in a Warfalock tablet and some yeast nutrient. Eh, maybe not yeast nutrient. Um, but yeah, I'll do that at the 15 minute mark when I put in the mandarina. Okay, we've got a pretty good boil going on. Um, so I'm going to set a timer for 45 minutes, drop in my 60 minute additions and let it do its magic. Hey Siri, set a timer for 45 minutes. So I did a thing and I forgot to add my sugar. So I'm just gonna add it now. It's a, uh, I think we're 30 minutes into the boil. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Anyway, 
Learn from me. Don't make my mistakes. It should be fine. It shouldn't really change much. Told you I'm not perfect. Okay, so now time for our 15 minute edition and our Warfalec tablet. I'm gonna throw this just in the kettle and then this in the spider. So I forgot to um, like grind up my coriander and rosemary or even harvest my rosemary earlier. So I'm gonna do it in here because all the cameras are in here now. Um, so if you're in Southern California, there's a high chance that your hedges are rosemary. I don't know why, but it's really, really nice and they smell great all the time. Um, so I just harvested these from like my front courtyard of my apartment. Um, fortunately, I got there before the gardeners did because this is like some super fresh rosemary. Um, it's not like barky at all. And then I've got my coriander that I got from my home brew, brew shop. So we're going to do 10 grams of each of these. Screw it. I'm just going to throw them right in. Let's see if this makes a difference. This will be an experiment. All right. There's 10 grams. Um, so I'm going to actually grind this up before I do the coriander because it's wetter. So it's like, it's usually sticky. And I just use my coffee grinder. I wipe it out pretty well with some water before I do it um, to get all the coffee oils out, but works great. All right, so now I'm gonna weigh out my coriander. All right, so now I've just kind of got a little paste almost. I'm just going to leave that in the grinder until I need it. And that goes in at uh, five minutes of the boil. Okay, I've made my usual death trap. Um, with my wort chiller and uh, my faucet and everything. So I'm going to just turn off my heat and start it all. Okay, so as you can see, we got down to 65. Fantastic. I love winters in LA because our water gets cold. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is just sanitize my ferments where I'm using my spike flex right now, and I'm going to just transfer easy peasy lemon squeezy, and then I'm going to pitch my yeast because we're at temp and lock it all up. I've already sanitized this guy once, um, and I sanitized through the valve as well just to make sure we're all good in there. Getting in all the crevices. Give her a little dump. Okay, so let's transfer. It looks like we've got, I can't even see it. We've got an amount of beer, it looks like. All right, so I'm going to turn my pump back on. And as I always do, I'm gonna hold it up a little bit, get it aerated. So while this is going, I'm just gonna sanitize my pipette and I'm gonna take my original gravity. All right, so we are looking for an original gravity of 1.053. So I think we might be high. Um, so our original bricks is 13 and a half. 
So we're at 1.057. So, I mean, I was, I was under before, I think probably because of the water, but I think it looks like we've got enough boil off to give us a little bit higher gravity than we were expecting. I'm not mad at it. I like a higher gravity. So 1.057, still says 5.5% on here, but I doubt it. And now we just gotta figure out how much we have. So for yeast, um, I really, really like White Labs French Saison yeast. Um, it is the most attenuative yeast that I've ever used. It will get you down to like 1.005 if you let it. I mean, you really don't have a choice, I guess, if you want to ferment your beer totally. Um, so I've been working with the same strain for a few batches. Um, this is uh, on its fourth generation. And uh, I made a starter with this uh, last week. And I just kind of uh, decanted uh, the liquid in it. Um, so this is pretty much all eh, moderately good yeast. Um, so it should be super healthy. Honestly, I think this Saison is going to ferment out in probably like three days just because this yeast is a beast. Um, and I'm going to put my Play-Doh airlock on this one so that I can uh, track my progress with the fermentation. And I just took this out of the refrigerator um, a couple minutes ago. Um, and I'll pitch it this afternoon when it warms up. And yeah, but it should, it like we didn't need to do another starter, so it should totally be enough yeast to make a delicious 5.5% beer. And on, on my uh, brew father readout, it says the final gravity is gonna be 1.011. I can almost guarantee it's gonna be lower than that. Um, this uh, Saison tends to be uh, very high alcohol, but I usually do add, uh, uh, I think I usually add 36 ounces of cherry juice to it. Um, so we'll get that. So it's not gonna get into the eight and nines like it usually does, but I can almost guarantee it's gonna be a 6% or not a 5.5er. But I like a strong Saison. All right, so now I'm gonna pitch my uh, French Saison yeast. We've got about five and a quarter gallons, which is great. Sanitize the crap out of my lid. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys do some weird stuff with this Saison. Uh, it's pretty great basic recipe and you can take it anywhere. Like any fruit additions will pretty much go great with it. Um, and aging is like gonna be amazing. Uh, like and subscribe. Welcome to part what am I doing? All right, nine pounds. Whew, I know I'm tired. Jenny usually asks me if I need to have some help moving the body after I've milled. Uh, haven't gotten the text yet, but we'll see. Okay, so I take an iPhone video, you know. Thank you.